Logic is the search for valid arguments. We want to know what forms or structure of arguments guarantee that they are necessary truth preserving, NTP. What happens when we succeed? Well, we have everything that we need to reason well. Is good reasoning just using logic? Let's consider. Hello, philosophers. I'm Chico. Welcome to the Philosopher Channel Introduction to Propositional Logic course. I'm actually redoing this video thanks to something that was pointed out to me by a viewer named Russell's Teapot. Um, one of the examples that I was using was a little off from what was being presented in our textbook. The whole point of this video is to ask the question, is good reasoning just a matter of using logic? Is good reasoning just a matter of using uh, of being necessary truth preserving? Because remember, being necessary truth preserving is an aspect of logic, but it's not the whole of logic. Remember, there were uh, necessary truth preserving means that if the premises are true, then the conclusion has to be true. And there were a number of ways for this to happen. One way this can happen is due to some facts about identity. So I'll use the example that Russell's teapot gave me in the comment. Um, imagine the following argument. I am dating uh, Peter Parker, therefore I am dating Spider-Man. Now that argument right there is necessary truth preserving because Peter Parker is identical to Spider-Man. It's just who Spider-Man is. So based on that fact, that, that argument is going to be necessary truth preserving. And it's not based on the structure of the argument. That would be something like lo being logically valid. Being logically valid is being necessary truth preserving, NTP, based on the structure of the argument. Now imagine Mary Jane Watson is dating Peter Parker but she doesn't know that Peter Parker is identical to Spider-Man. She would reason something like this. I am dating Peter Parker, therefore I am not dating Spider-Man. Now, this is actually false. Her, her conclusion is false. And in fact, uh, this necessary truth preserving that we saw, the necessary truth preserving argument has been put into like a contradiction now all of a sudden because Peter Parker is identical to Spider-Man. And yet, wouldn't this be good reasoning? If you thought that Peter Parker was not identical to Spider-Man, it seems like this would be good reasoning to say, I am dating Peter Parker, therefore I am not dating Spider-Man. So because of her ignorance of the, the identity of Spider-Man, it seems like she is uh, reasoning well, even though she is violating NTP. So that tells us right off the bat that NTP and reasoning well or good reasoning can't be identical. They can't be the same thing. But remember, being logically valid isn't just being necessary truth preserving. It isn't just being NTP. It's being NTP due to the structure of the argument. It's that the fact that the, the form of the argument guarantees that if the premises are true, that the conclusion has to be true. So maybe being logically valid is what makes something good reasoning. Unfortunately, this can't be the case either. And uh, it's for two reasons. The first reason is because you can be logically valid and be poor reasoning. And uh, an example of how this can happen is that you can have logically valid arguments with false premises. So remember that logical validity just means that if the premises are true, that the conclusion is gonna be true. But you could have that. You could have a structure of an argument such that if the premises are true, the conclusion has to be true and the premises just be false. So imagine the following argument. This is gonna be a valid with, with true statements. So if I say something like, uh, philosophy is interesting and logic is rewarding, therefore logic is rewarding. Now that, argument right there. It's given like two things. Philosophy is interesting and logic is rewarding in that that two things in one premise. And then the second premise, the conclusion, I should say, not the premise, but the conclusion is just taking one of those things. The first premise is saying both of those two things are true. The conclusion is saying, therefore, one of those things is true. And it seems like that's a logically valid structure, right? That, that structure has got to be such that if that premise is true, that conclusion has to be true, right? So that's a logically valid argument. Uh, 
But now let's replace that with something where the premise is false. If I say something like philosophy is interesting and logic is boring, therefore logic is boring. What? Now, the same. we have the same structure. It's an A and B, therefore B, right? It's one thing and another thing, therefore that second thing, right? That's the same structure as the first argument. So it's logically valid. The problem is the first premise is false. Logic isn't boring. It's riveting, right? I mean, I'm sure you're on the edge of your seat right now as we speak. You can't believe how fascinating this is. Let me give you one that's a little bit more obvious. If I sell, if I tell you that one is odd and two is odd, therefore two is odd, right? That first statement, one is odd and two is odd, is a false statement. The structure of the argument is the same. A and B is true, therefore B is true, right? And, and it seems like that structure is logically valid. If both things are true, then one of them by itself is going to be true for sure, right? The problem is both of those things aren't true. So the premise is false. So you can have logically valid arguments with false premises. That's poor reasoning. A second reason that logical validity is not identical to good reasoning is that there are some forms of reasoning that are not logically valid but are still good reasoning. One form of reasoning is called inductive reasoning. So um, you have probably run into a number of apples in your life and every apple that you've seen in your life has not been poisonous to consumption. And let's say you are in a uh, survival scenario and uh, you have no means of getting any kind of food and you stumble upon an apple tree, a species of apple that you've never seen before, okay? And you think to yourself, is this apple poisonous though? Now, you can think of all the species of apples that you have gone through in your life. That one has not been poisonous. 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 Can you guarantee 100% that this one is not poisonous? This one is not, this is not logically valid argument to say all the, the species of apples that I have run into so far have not been poisonous. This species of apple is one that I have not run into. Therefore, this species is not poison. That's not logically valid, right? And yet, are you going to eat the apple? I mean, you're going to starve if you don't. Um, and it, it seems like good reasoning in the first place, right? Like if, if all these other species of apples have been non-poisonous, isn't it a, a good reasoning to, to say that this one probably is too? That would be inductive reasoning to going from uh, looking from all these different examples and then concluding that everything must be that way. Um, it's not going to be 100%, you know, like always correct, but it's still good reasoning. Another way to uh, reason that is not logically valid is abductive reasoning. So this would be reasoning to the best conclusion. So I used to teach Spanish a long time ago, and uh, I am personally of Inca descent, but I like to teach all of the native uh, or the indigenous peoples. And I, I like to teach the Mayans. They were interesting because they developed writing and nobody else in the Americas did. And when you read some of the stuff that they wrote, especially uh, the stuff about the Mayan conquests, it was always stuff like, we never lost a battle. None of our guys died. All of their guys were happily enslaved. You know, there you, you get this stuff that, that's been left over and do you believe it? It seems kind of crazy, right? Now, there's no uh, logically valid argument here to say that this is impossible. But when we see how that kind of stuff never happens in history, and we see different attempts at propaganda, we put together all the little details, and we reason to the best conclusion uh, that this must be just propaganda, right? This must not, it must be telling the story kind of but also, you know, just trying to make the king look good so that uh, he'll be happy or so that everybody else will, will think great things about him or something like that, right? But we, we don't have a logically valid argument for this, but it's still reasoning to the best conclusion, right? It's still taking the details and um, putting together the best picture that we can come up with from those details.
So if NTP is not identical to logical validity, why study logic in the first place? Well, oftentimes it is the case that logically valid arguments are cases of reasoning well, or they are good reasoning. It's just that they aren't identical. You know, it's just that there are other ways of reasoning well, and it's not the case that being logically valid is good reasoning in every single instance, but most of the time, those two things will overlap. Okay, now that we have a good understanding of what validity is, let's go ahead and practice. Please do 1.4.1 exercises for next time. See if you can tell which arguments are valid, which arguments are not. And I enjoyed going back and redoing one of these old videos, man. It's been a long time since I've uh, dipped into the propositional logic game. Hopefully you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll see you in the next video. Adios.